We are now doing question four, and this question four is from November 2018, accounting grade 12. Paper that was written in November 2018, question four, it is cash flow statement and interpretation. And this question is 70 marks. Cash flow statement and interpretation. Cash flow statement and interpretation. Four one. You are provided with the information about Vero about Vuma Limited for the past two financial years and at 30 June. The company is situated in KZN and trades in racing bikes. Required. Note provide figures of financial indicators ratios or percentages and comparison with the previous year to support comments or explanations calculate the following for 2018 4.1.1 percentage operating expenses on sales percentage operating expenses on sales 4.1.1 percentage operating expenses on sales the formula here is clear it's percentage operating on sales so it's going to oper it's going to be operating expenses over sales that's the formula so let's look for operating expenses yes we are calculating this for 2018 remember and then of on page 14 <coughs> Page 14, you are given the information. We are calculating these figures for 2018. Right? Percentage operating expenses on sales. Operating expenses is 1,900,000. That's given on page 14. And then our sales, our sales is 13,182,000. Multiplied by 100 equals to 1 million nine hundred thousand that's operating expenses on sales we want to see the op the percentage operating expenses on sales right operating expenses 1 million nine hundred thousand divided by 13 million one hundred and eighty two thousand one million nine hundred thousand divided by 13 million 182,000 multiplied by 100 equals to the percentage operating expenses on sales is 14.4 percent 14.4 percent let's verify this 1 million 900,000 divided by 13 million 182,000 multiplied by 100 Yes, that's 14.4. So remember the percentage operating expenses, we want to keep it as low as possible because the main aim of a business is to make a profit. So therefore, we need to try by all means in the business to reduce our expenses. So at this point in time, our percentage operating expenses on sales is 14.4%. Right? Then the following one that needs to be calculated under 4.1, which is 4.1.2, 4.1.2, it is the asset test ratio. 4.1.2, we want to calculate the asset test ratio. Remember this ratio is assessing if the business cannot be able to sell its stock, will that business still be able to pay for the current liabilities? Therefore, the formula is current assets. Remember the current assets, they are made up of inventory, debtors and cash. The stock, debtors and cash. So 
current assets minus stock which is inventory is to current liabilities current assets minus inventory is to current liabilities that's the formula you are not required to rewrite the formula when you are in the examination i'm just doing it because we are just revising this paper and we want to make sure that all of you are clear with the formula but there is no need to rewrite the formula when you are in the exam so the formula is current assets minus inventory is to current liabilities so let us then go to page 14 where we are getting all the information our total current assets is 2,427,000 Two million four hundred and twenty-seven thousand current assets, minus our stock, which is one million six hundred and fifty-two thousand. We want to see that because this two million four hundred and twenty-seven thousand is made up of stock, the money that is with the debtors, and also cash in the bank. It gives us this total of 2,427,000. So, but if we are taking out the amount of stock, which is we're assuming that this stock will not sell, we want to check if we can still be able to pay for our current liabilities, if our stock can stop selling. Right, our current liabilities will be 1 million, is 1,244,000. It is 1,244,000. One million two hundred and forty-four thousand. Right. Two million four hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Two million four hundred and twenty-seven thousand minus one million six hundred and fifty-two thousand inventory equals to seven hundred and seventy-five thousand. Seven hundred and seventy-five thousand is to one million two hundred and forty-four thousand. 775,000 775,000 divided by 1,244,000 775,000 divided by 1,244,000 equals to 0, 0,6 is to one zero comma six is to one so it is clear now that this business is mainly dependent on stock because if you look at this two million four hundred and twenty seven current assets which should be used to pay for current liabilities if you look at the two million four hundred and it's enough to cover the current liabilities so if you can do the current ratio you can see that this business can be able under normal circumstances it can be able to pay for current liabilities but if you are doing the asset test ratio now assessing if maybe there can be a new competitor in the area and then that competitor takes all our customers and our stock is not able to sell if you look at the value of stock out of this 2,427,000 stock is about 1,652,000. So as a result, if you take out stock from what we are having as current assets, we are only left with 775,000, which is not covering our current liabilities of 1,244,000. So there is a lot of cash which is tied up in stock in this business. So this business needs to ensure that they sell their stock as fast as possible so that there can be cash available because there is too much cash tied up in stock. 4.1.3, we want to calculate the percentage return on shareholders' equity. Percentage return, percentage return on shareholders' equity. percentage return on share on average shoulders equity this ratio is abbreviated as raw share percentage return on average shoulders equity is abbreviated as raw share 
right? And then the formula of calculating this percentage return on average shareholders' equity, it is net profit after tax. over average shareholders equity multiplied by 100. I indicated to you that it's not necessary to, uh, you are not required to rewrite the formula. I'm just writing it so that you are clear with the formula, but when you are in the exam, you are not required to write the formula. So net profit after tax over average shareholders equity multiplied by 100. This is how we calculate the percentage return on shareholders equity. So then let's then turn our pay question paper onto page 14 where there is information. The net profit after tax is, is given in information A. Net profit after tax for 2018 is one million nine hundred and eleven thousand one million nine hundred and eleven thousand over one million nine hundred and eleven thousand over average shareholders equity shareholders equity for 2017 is seven million one hundred and ninety one thousand seven million one hundred and ninety one thousand plus shareholders equity because we want to calculate the average so it's 2017 plus 2018 divided by 2 so 2018 is 7 million 191,000 plus 12 million 112,000 12 million 112,000 all this should be divided by 2 multiplied by 100 so our net profit after tax is 1,911,000. Let us say over. Let's calculate the average shareholders' equity. Remember, when you are calculating the average shareholders' equity, you need to make sure, whenever you are calculating average, you need to make sure that you press the equal sign before you divide. So it's going to be 7,191,000. 7,191,000 plus 12,112,000 12,112,000 equals to you need to press the equal sign and then divide by 2 equal to 9,651,500 9,651,500 and 51,500 multiplied by 100. 1,911,000 over 9,651,500 multiplied by 100. So 1,911,000 divided by 9,651,500 multiplied by 100. So the percentage return on average shareholders' equity is 19%, 19.8%, which is a good percentage because in most cases when we are looking at the percentage return on average shareholders' equity, we compare it to an alternative investment. And the alternative investment is where you are investing your money in the fixed deposit. And the interest normally ranges from 8 to 10 percent. So if you are able to invest in a business and you get a return that is 19.8 percent, so it's good because it is um, bigger than what we can get from an alternative investment.